Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss simplex method for linear programming problem. I will take one example of unbounded solution using simplex method. So let us start this example. Here this problem is of maximization and these are the questions. So first we will convert it into a standard form. It is already maximization problem, so no need to convert it. So we can write maximize z equal to 3x1 plus 4x2. So here these uh, inequalities are given and this is the less than equal to it means we need to add slack variable. So we can write on adding slack variables slack variables you can assume s1 and s2 we get so these two inequalities can be written as x1 minus x2 plus s1 equal to 1 and this is minus 2x1 plus x2 plus s2 this equal to 2 and finally you can write x1 greater than equal to 0 x2 greater than equal to 0 s1 greater than equal to 0 s2 greater than equal to 0 now as we have converted this into standard form we will find initial basic feasible solution for this if you see here we have four variables x1 x2 s1 and s2 but only two equations are there so two variables are extra so initially we can assume that x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to 0 so if you put x1 equal to 0 x2 equal to 0 you will get x1 s1 equal to 1 and s2 equal to 2 so we have to check whether the this solution is initial basic feasible solution or not how can we check so you can check the corresponding matrix of this system of equation so if you see this one is you can write the corresponding matrix as 1 minus 2 minus 1 1 1 0 0 so this matrix corresponding to these variables s1 and s2 these basic variables this is 1 0 0 1 and this is a unit matrix corresponding to these basic variables so if it is unit matrix it means this choice is correct this is initial basic feasible solution so these variables are basic variables these variables are non basic variables and we have already checked that this uh, part of this matrix corresponding to basic variables is a unit matrix it means we can go ahead to make the first simplex table as i have already discussed in the previous lecture so this is the format of simplex table here this cj these are the coefficients of x1 x2 s1 s2 in the objective function so here you can write this is 3 4 0 and 0 here basic variables s1 and s2 cb these are the basically coefficients of basic variables in the objective function because s1 and s2 are not there that's why their coefficients are 0 xv is the val values of the basic variables this value is 1 and this is 2 and this these are the coefficients of x1 x2 s1 s2 in this equation so you can write it 1 minus 2 minus 1 1 1 0 0 1 now we have to check whether this solution is an optimum solution or not for this we can calculate here z j here first you can calculate the value of z with the help of this table how can we calculate look at this non basic variables are zero only we have the values of basic variables it means here we need not to consider the basic variables this equation further can be written as plus zero s1 plus zero s2 so if base basic variables the values of basic variables are given and non basic variables are 0 it means we can write it z as only in the form of basic variables because non basic variables are 0 
so C B X Z equal to C B X B so C B X B so dot product of these two vectors. So Z is C B X B zero, zero into one zero, zero into two zero. This is zero. So value of Z can be calculated with the help of this table. Here we have written only basic variables because all non-basic variables are zero. So we can eliminate non-basic variables from Z. Now look at this. How can we calculate Z uh, J? You know Z J this equal to C B X J minus C J. C B X J means C B and X J. Dot product of C B and this one minus this value. So this is because these two values are zero. So you can write it minus three. This is minus four. This is zero and zero. Now look at this. If all values are greater than equal to zero, it means this solution is an optimal solution. But if at least one value is negative, it means it is not an optimal solution. So you will select the most negative, and this is the most negative. It means now x2 will enter into the basic solution. One variable will move out from basic. Variables. So, which variable to decide? We calculate the ratio, ratio of x b and x j. But this value must be greater than zero, positive value. So, this is not positive, so you cannot cannot calculate the ratio. So, just leave it. Only this value is positive. The ratio is two b by two by one, two by one. So, this is two. Only one value is there. So, this. Variable S2 will move out from the basic solution and look at this. This particular element is known as pivot element because this is the center of focus. We have to focus on this particular element because we have to make it one return. However, it is already one. It may possible in some of the examples it is not one. So then we make it one. Why may we need to make it one? Because X2 is going to take going to replace. S2 and look at this S2 is 0 1. It means now it should be 0 1. So how can we do it? So here I have formed this table. So you can see all these entries are here. This one is this is the pivot element. So as I told you, X2 is going to replace S2. So it means this should be 0 and this is 1. So we need to form Another table. Look at this. This is already one. So no need to change this row. So if you write this as R1, this as R2, it means the rules for the new rows R2. No need to change R2 means R2 will be replaced by R2. So you can write it here in the second table. Look at this. In the previous S1 and S2 were there basic variables. Here I have written this X2 and the coefficient of this. X to the objective function is four. That's why it is four. This is zero and this is four. These values will be calculated with the help of this table. Only this is fixed because these are the coefficient. Here it is S one and X two because now the new basic variables are S one and X two. So look at this rule. R two replaced by R two. It means this will remain two. This minus one. This is one, zero, and one. Now to make it zero, what we can do? You have to make it zero with the help of this one. So this is minus one. This is plus one. It means the rule for R one is R one plus R two. So this will in this way this will become zero. So simply means you have to add these two. Two plus one. This is three. This is zero. This is zero. This is one, and this is Now calculate the value of Z here. Z this is zero into three plus four into two. This is eight. Now calculate Z J. This is Z one. As I told you, Z J. This is C B X J minus C J. It means dot product of C B and X one minus this one. So zero into zero zero. Four into minus one minus four minus four minus three. So look at this. Here first value I write zero into zero. Plus four into minus one and minus this is three. So this is minus four minus three. 
this is minus 7 so here it is minus 7 so and these values are look at 0 into 0 0 4 into 1 4 and 4 minus 4 this is 0 this is 0 into 0 0 this is 0 so this is 0 0 into 0 0 4 into 1 4 4 minus 0 this is 4 now look at this one value is negative it means this solution is not an optimum solution so we will choose the most negative this is the most negative it means x1 will enter into the basic solution now which vector will move out from the basic solution to decide we calculate the ratio now ratio of xb and x1 but condition is there that all these values must be greater than 0 this is 0 you cannot calculate ratio this is minus 1 you cannot calculate ratio it means no value is there which is greater than 0 so that you can find the ratio so all values are either 0 or less than 0 it means you cannot find the ratio so here you will write this is an unbounded solution if all values are here in this step if all values are less than equal to 0 it means the solution is unbounded solution so you will stop your problem here and simply will give the reasoning that all these values corresponding to this incoming vector here are less than equal to 0 therefore the problem has unbounded unbounded solution no need to make any further table simply the answer will be unbounded solution so I hope that you got the concept of unbounded solution using simplex method. Thank you.